Hello everyone. We are from Team 1. Our team consists of Busan Chung 254424, Ong Xu Ro 253250, Li Long Xiang 254653 and La Chai Shan 253254. Today, we will be presenting three types of treasury instrument, which is negotiable instruments of deposits, NID, repurchase agreement, repo, and Bank Negar Malaysia bonds. First, Negotiable Instruments of Deposits, NID. Negotiable Instrument of Deposits, NID, is an instrument given by a financial organization affirming that a specific whole in mer or foreign currency has been saved with a giving bank for a specific tenor at a predefined pace of premium, coupon rate might be fixed, coasting R0. They are transferable in nature, enabling the holder to accept the assets as money or use them in a way suitable for the exchange or as indicated by their inclination. The reserve sum recorded on the archive incorporates a documentation with regards to the particular sum guaranteed and should be forked over the required funds either on request or at a predefined time. A debatable instrument can be moved starting with one individual then on to the next. When the instrument is moved, the holder acquires a full legitimate title to the instrument. Negotiable instruments are critical to our economy. They allow people to do business and to be certain that they will receive money for their services or goods without the actual transfer of cash. NID is created with a promise or order must be unconditional, the amount of money must be a fixed amount, with or without interest charges, the instrument must be payable to bearer or payable to order, the promise or order must be payable on demand or at a definite time, and, and the promise. Order must not state any other undertaking or instruction by the person promising or ordering payment to do any act in addition to the payment of money. Only a bank institution can issue NID. There are bank, payees, drawees, and endorsers can involve in NID. NID come with risks, namely interest rate risk and credit risk of the issuing bank. Similar to bonds, the market value of NID increases when the interest rate falls which results in a capital gain for investors if they decide to sell their NID at that point. Likewise, the market value of NID decreases when interest rates go up. With regards to interest rate risk, investors should take note that the market value of longer tenured NID is more sensitive to changes in interest rates compared with shorter tenured ones. For example, compared with a 1-year NID, a 5-year NID would see a larger gain or loss in market value when interest rates change. From a credit risk perspective, investors need to be mindful that the value of their NID may be negatively affected should the issuing bank face trouble as NID are not covered by the PIDM scheme, which ensures normal deposits in the event of a bank failure. Repurchase Agreement, Repo, is short-term instrument to sell money market instrument commonly securities and agree to buy back at a higher price in the future date or on demand. Although the sales of asset had done in repo, but due to the seller had agreed to repurchase the asset, the asset act more like a collateral in repo trading and the buyer will earn interest named as repo interest. Repo was a popular instrument in money market use of short-term financing tools. Repo's characteristic as high liquid and quality help investor to obtain short-term fund in a short time. Repo is commonly used by central bank to manage money supply especially in open market operations. For example, Bank Negara Malaysia can sell T-bills or BNM bonds and agree to repurchase back in future to reduce the amount of money in market and vice versa. Repurchase agreement can also be set as a loan with money market papers as collateral. Repurchase agreement is created when sell securities to another party at the same time promise to purchase back the securities at a repo rate at future time or on demand, at the purchase date, buyer will place the surplus fund and as a return seller will pledge securities. On the maturity dates, seller will return principal plus interest that agreed by two parties before and buyer will return the security. Parties who involved in repurchase agreement is buyer and seller. Seller will sell its securities with agreement to purchase it at a future date in order to get funds while buyer will buy the securities and will sell back to the buyer at a future date. Traditionally, seller of repo made up of securities market intermediaries such as securities dealer and investment bank and investor who want to raise short-term fund. For buyer's sides, usually cash investor with surplus funds who is seeking for high short-term investment with less risk. Even though repo is considered as secured instrument, 
but risk is still existed to each parties of the repo participants. One of the risks associated with repo is counterparty default. Counterparty default happen when one of the parties fail to return cash or securities on the repurchase date. This means that seller failed to buy back or the buyer failed to sell the securities to the seller on the repurchase date. Others than that, parties who involved in repo transaction may face market risk. This is the risk that the value of financial instrument will change according to market price movements. For instance, when market interest rate increase, margining will help to reduce buyer risk. On the other side, seller is still exposed to this risk because it will mark loss on its balance sheet during repo's life. The market value of the securities is calculated at its sturdy price, not clean price which is included accrued interest. When bank experienced short cash position, bank treasury will sell securities under repo agreement in order to finance its short position with lower cost. Bank will buy back securities when experienced long cash position. The use of repo was regulated by law and regulations enforced by multiple regulatory agencies. For instance, in Europe, repo is regulated by EU Financial Collateral Directive and Short Selling Regulation and indirectly through regulation of market users such as Investment Bank and Commercial Bank. Third, Bank Negar Malaysia Bonds. Bank Negar Malaysia Bonds also known as Bank Negar Monetary Notes, BNMN. BNMN are usually issued for a longer tenure, ranging from three months to one year. BNMNs are mainly issued at a discount to their face value. BNM can also issue fixed rate coupon bearing or floating rate BNMN. BNMN is created for the purpose of managing liquidity in financial market. Beside, main objective of created BNMN to increase efficiency in absorbing excess liquidity in the financial system and thus its impact on domestic financial market conditions. BNMN will be issued either on a discounted or coupon bearing basis depending on investors' demand. Discount-based BNMN will be traded using the same market convention as the existing BNB and Treasury bills while the coupon-based BNMN will adopt the market convention of Malaysian government securities. BNM and principal dealer are involved in the process of issuance BNM notes. BNM is responsible for selling BNMN into money market to fund the operations of the organizations. The principal dealers are as a part of initiatives to develop primary and secondary markets of public debt securities. Both BNMN are free form credit risk as these are issued by Bank Negar Malaysia, BNM. BNMN is default risk free as well. It is a highly liquid with relatively deep secondary market and are sold at a pure discount to their face value. The pricing mechanisms is based on demand and supply in the market. BNMN is regulated under Financial Service Act 2013, FSA 2013. So we come to the end of our presentation of three types of treasury instruments, which is negotiable instrument of deposits, NID, repurchase agreement, repo, and bank negar monetary notes BNMN. I hope you guys enjoy this video, thank you.